Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 18.323. This build includes a number of new features and enhancements over the last public preview build which was 18.317 and the last build video we did which was 18.305. So it's been a few weeks um, and in this build video we'll be taking a look at everything new in this one specifically of course and a bunch of the other stuff that I may have missed in the previous builds that we didn't do a video on and indeed the features that were not enabled for me in 18305 because they are now enabled for me now we'll show you that at the end but for now let's uh, take a look at the 18323 specific features starting with raw image format support or improvements to raw image format support so Windows kind of already supports raw image uh, formats in some areas, not all of them. But with this extension, now if you install this, it should support even more. So if you're somebody who takes photographs in raw file formats, uh, hopefully installing this will enable more of those file formats to run natively on your Windows 10 PC. You'll be able to see thumbnails in File Explorer, open them in photos, etc, etc. So as I said, some raw image file formats were already supported before, but now with this extension, even more of them are supported natively by Windows, which is very nice. Okay, so moving right along, the next noteworthy change is with the Windows Light theme. Uh, just a few bug fixes here and there. Overall, not much has changed on the surface. It just looks a little bit nicer now. So notifications, some icons in notifications will show up properly. The battery flyout here, for example, also has the correct colouring in text now because it was white before, so it didn't look great. Now it looks great. It's overall looking quite nice. And with the addition of the shadows, which were introduced in a couple of builds beforehand, which I now have enabled. Things are looking pretty good in white mode. Drop shadows look really quite nice. If we go into uh, settings here, right click on something. That's not right click, come on now. Let's do that properly. There we go, you see that nice sort of drop shadow behind context menus. And that shows up in quite a lot of places now, which is very nice indeed. In addition, since we're in the settings app, let's take a look at this top banner here. Again, not a new feature for this build specifically, but since it wasn't enabled from before, this is the first time I'm showing it off. Essentially, it gives you your account picture here, your email address and your, your name, of course, a quick link to your Microsoft account online, and then a bunch of things that you can do to improve your PC. So make sure Windows Update is up to date, check out your latest reward points, set up your phone, which I haven't done here, uh, so it's given me sort of like a hey you should probably do that and also OneDrive I, mean, I haven't backed up to OneDrive in a while so OneDrive is sort of alerting me to do that there as well if I click on one of these it will take me to my respective whatever it is so if I click on OneDrive here like I just did there we go that can do that if I click on your phone it will launch the, the your phone app if I click on Windows updates it will take me to the Windows update area. So other than the raw image format improvements and improvements to Windows Lite, not much is new in this build. This is the first 19H1 underscore release build Microsoft has released. And that basically means Microsoft is getting ready to be done with 19H1. We are starting the final process. Microsoft is going to start cleaning a lot of things up, uh, just building upon everything that's it, it's introduced so far and fixing it all up. I, I doubt we'll see any new features uh, for this release now. N not Nothing huge anyway. Everything from here on out will be bug fixes and just improvements to whatever is in the build already. But uh, yeah, that's a good sign for those of you who want stability when updates come along. Uh, the 1809 release was kind of a, a little bit buggy at launch. Uh, deleting users' files wasn't a great look, but Microsoft is hoping to not hit that same issue. So it's starting a bit earlier, making sure everything is running smoothly uh, way before this update is ready to be finalized. So yes, yeah, version 1903, which means it'll probably be released in around April this year. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at some of the features we missed at the previous builds. Uh, the separation of Cortana and Search. This is something I demoed in a different kind of video a few weeks ago, uh, but it's finally here for insiders to test in full force. Cortana and Search have split up. They're no longer together. So now when you click into the search bar, you'll just get a search experience. There's no Cortana to be found here. There's no hamburger menu that gets you access to the Cortana notebook, for example. It's just the search UI, which looks, you know, it's search. If you want to search for something, you can say, I don't know, let's search for settings you'll get your settings options and so on and so forth. Now you can still access Cortana commands through the search UI. So if I say, hello, there, it will give you an option to say, let's chat. And if I hit on that, it will just take me to the Cortana UI, which will then respond with a typical Cortana response. Um, so the Cortana UI is still here. It's next to the search bar now. So not much has changed for most users. Uh, you click on the Cortana icon and it just starts listening automatically. Now, as you can see, this UI isn't done, or at least I hope it's not done. It's basically just the same UI as before, but now in the middle of the display, which kind of looks stupid. So I'm hoping that Microsoft isn't done with this and they improve it before 19H1 is finalized. If I'm honest, this would look much better if Microsoft just made this UI, the Windows key and C UI, just default. So when you tap on the icon, it gives you that UI instead. It's a much smaller, it doesn't have the hamburger menu. The hamburger menu floating in the sort of middle of the display looks kind of weird. 
But yes, this is the new Cortana UI. Well, this is the current Cortana UI. Not a huge fan of what it looks like now that it's been separated. I'd much prefer having it part of search. Maybe one day they'll add an option to put them back together or, and I would prefer this, they just make the Cortana experience amazing. I'm unfortunately doubting that, but I hope the assistant experience on Windows 10 becomes better than what this is because right now, just look at this. This is the home screen UI. Can I be of assistance? Well, I don't know. Can you be of assistance? Um, it would be nice if you could tell me. Uh, <laughs> there's just nothing here anymore. So yeah, Microsoft needs to do a lot of work to this Cortana UI to improve it. Uh, but for now, the Cortana Research Split, this is still a pre-release build, so there's, it's time to improve it. So this is basically happening because some users don't want the Cortana feature sort of muddling up their search experience. So now you can just right click, hide the Cortana icon and Cortana will no longer bother you on the taskbar. It's, st uh, it's still in settings, of course, you can see here. Cortana options and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, uh, by default, you can hide Cortana from the taskbar now, or you can hide search and just have Cortana. So if you're somebody who doesn't search much or doesn't need the huge search bar on the taskbar, you can just have the Cortana icon instead, which I think looks quite nice as well. Okay, so let's jump into settings real quick. There's a new Windows Insider sort of setup screen. If we go to Windows Insider program here, it's a little bit cleaner now. You can see that here's the ring of your choice. You can click on it, it'll give you options for slow, fast, and release preview. So if we back out there, for some reason, the UI has to reload every time, but then we get your Windows Insider account and the ability to opt at this device out of flighting when the next major release of Windows 10 is installed. Now this is great for those of you who sort of jump onto the Insider program fast ring late in an update's development, just to get the stuff early and you just you know the bills are getting more stable and you just want the new features and maybe to submit feedback here and there but you're not interested in getting the the next next feature update which will be much more buggy than the current fast ring build so you install the latest build you turn this on when the 19h1 rtm or the final build is compiled uh, microsoft will automatically remove you from the fast ring so you are not at risk of getting any of the um you know the buggier next next feature update builds which is a, a good idea i think so Microsoft has updated the reset this PC UI. If you go to this option here and click on remove everything, you'll now get like a choose settings screen, except I didn't. Can I go there maybe? There we go. So there's the choose settings screen. Here's the options here, data erasure and data drives. You can just remove your files, which is quicker, or you can remove, you can remove all files only from the drive where Windows is installed. So if you're somebody who needs to sort that out, you can do so now from this UI directly, which is very nice indeed. In addition to resetting the PC, uh, Microsoft has also started reserving around seven to eight gigabytes of storage on devices, uh, just to ensure Windows updates can install smoothly. If we come into storage here and go to more categories, I believe. System and reserved, you can see here, reserve storage, 6.96 gigabytes. So Windows reserves some storage to ensure proper performance and successful updates on your device. Um, so yeah, so whenever there's a new feature update for Windows 10 to install, Microsoft has already reserved all the space it needs to install the update, so you should no longer get, oh, there's no space to install our latest update, please clear some space now. It's just to make the user's life a little bit easier. I'm not sure how this works on devices with, say, 32 gigs of storage. Reserving 7 gigs on a 32 gigabyte device is, is quite a lot. So I'm not sure how it works there, but on devices with, say, your normal amount of storage, 128 gig minimum onwards, or even 64 gigs, this should be more than fine. Okay, so let's also take a look at that new emoji keyboard that I did mention in the last build. Okay, we now have the option to do cow emojis, which is very nice, directly from the native emoji picker here. That's pretty funny. And we also have uh, this one, symbols, which is also quite nice. Copyright logo, awesome. In addition, there's a new clipboard UI. I say new, it's slightly updated. Basically, all of the um, options here are now smaller because most people using this are using a mouse and keyboard so they don't need the huge big hitboxes. Having a smaller one makes a little bit more sense and doesn't that drop shadow look nice? I love the drop shadows. The drop shadows might be the best part about this new update for me. <laughs> if we jump into task manager here we can now set a default tab which is nice. So let's have performance set as our default tab so when I open task manager next it'll take me straight to performance or if I want um, let's see if I want details as my default tab, I could do that. And now when I open task manager, the details tab will be my preferred default. That's pretty much it. Uh, this is also probably the last 19H1 build video we're going to do. Maybe we'll do one more. I'm not entirely sure what Microsoft schedule is, but if they are planning to release an RS pre-release build very soon, then we'll be jumping straight onto that branch because that's sort of where the latest features are and whatnot. So um, yes, 19H1 is coming along nicely. I think now is a good time to install this on your primary devices if that's something you've been waiting for. Of course, check out the known issues list. There may be something specific for you there that you cannot, that will stop you from upgrading to it. But uh, for me, uh, for the most part, these builds are also, these builds are pretty good now. This is, we are, 
way beyond halfway through development at this point. Uh, feature complete. It's basically it's already it's basically already feature complete. We're just now waiting for the bug fixes to roll in, and it should be good to go in a few months. So uh, yes, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.